Uh, come closer. There you go. Too close. I'm too close. Come back forward. Step back. Forward. Are you just trying back. to make a dance? Forward. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Two cousins on the road find out what drives the industry that has taken America by storm. From mom and pop shops to the industry leaders discover why these business owners do what they do and how they've become successful in such a young, diverse, and lucrative industry that is estimated in $8 billion in revenue. Join us for an exclusive sneak peek behind the scenes of the vape industry. This is The Mitten Road Show. Let's go to Detroit. I want to go to Detroit. I'm seriously sick of Detroit. It's, it's far. Well, we've been there a ton. It's right here. Don't lie to the people. Where is it? Wait, it's like this. There-ish? Yep. Perfect. If you're not from Michigan, this is our map. That's why we use it. Works out. Let's go see Ryan. See you in a bit, buddy. Uh, today we are with Ryan Wagner with Independent Vapor Company out of, what city are we in? We're in Roseville, Michigan, which is about 12 miles north of Detroit. Okay. Yeah. What made you decide Roseville, Michigan? Are you from here? Um, you know, I was looking for a specific type of building, you know, it had to be somebody, you know, somebody had to, to be willing to rent to us, first of all, because yeah. we're in the vaping industry. Um, but also they, you know, we had to customize the building to what we wanted it, where it had retail, office space, shipping, mm -hmm. uh, warehousing, and manufacturing. So. so you do everything right out of this office? Correct. But okay. we're also on a store, like, you know, it's, it's cool because we're on a road where 110,000 cars a day drive by, so that makes our retail operation strong in the front. So, you know, we were really looking for a specific type of situation, sure. and it would just happen to be Roseville. So. so when you got the spot, you could move in immediately? Like, how did that happen? Uh, no, we got the space. Uh, it used to be an old gym. Uh, okay. You know, like a CrossFit gym. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't know what they got caught doing, but I heard they had to leave. <laughs> um, so um, they had to get out of here. The place was in complete disarray. So we spent, you know, uh, pretty much our life savings renovating the space over the next eight months. Uh, we ran into a situation with a contractor, you know, where he did the demo work on the building and then didn't complete the rest of what he said he was going to do. And he had the money already. Sure. So we had to sue him to get that money back. And wow. all while doing that, you know, we're growing out of a 1,500 square foot space in Madison Heights. <laughs> and, you know, I had juice spots, you know, stacked up sure. next to my desk and everything. So, um, you know, that was the struggle getting into this building. At least, yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, what made you decide, like, I want to be an e-liquid manufacturer? 
Uh, I'm opportunistic by nature, and uh, my business partner and I, Jarrett Kerouac and I, uh, had intended to open a coffee distribution company because um, we like, you know, usable goods, sure. and we think that that's a you know, good business to get in. People use it, they throw it away, they buy it again. Yeah. So um, we were looking into coffee. I have a background in wholesale coffee distribution just as a truck driver, but I, I kind of understood the, the industry a little bit by the time I had gotten out of it. and. Uh, you know, one day I just walked in, you know, I walked into a gas station where I was selling him coffee and I saw these things on the shelf and I'm like, what do those do? And he goes, those help you quit smoking. So like it started there with just the one that looks like a cigarette. Yeah. And I quit smoking with those. And uh, then I went back to cigarettes because those got to be pretty expensive. Sure. And uh, then I found um, Boosted e-liquid over here on Gratiot and 16 and bought okay. a setup with a pro tank. Wow. You know? And that helped me quit. But then I was like. <clears throat> This place is busy. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, 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 you know, there's people in and out constantly, and uh, you know, it seems to be a pretty good business. So I looked into it, and it seemed like a really great opportunity financially, and you know, low low cost of entry. Yeah. You know, so, was the key to it. So you obviously were a smoker. How long? How long did you smoke for? I smoked for like 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Since right? I was like in my teens, you know. Yeah. 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 And now, what's your all-day vape? Like, what do you? Um, you know, I vape. I vape one of these. Okay. You know, it's a it's an Aspire. That's a dot mod tank, but it's typically some setup that looks somewhat like this. Okay. You know, nothing um, extravagant, not stable, right. not. In, right, but I also carry this for stressful situations where I need some more, <laughs> you know, nicotine, sure, and that's sure. a soir and air. That's right now, though. Now, what about so. your juice? What's your uh, what's your go-to juice? My go-to e-liquid would have to be Millionaire Mango. Okay. Um, I've vaped, you know, eight bottles of it this summer so far. I fell back in love with it, you know, because, you know, when you make e-liquid, you, you get tired of vaping the same thing over and over and you just try a lot sure. of different things yeah. and beta testing makes you try more, oh, but gosh. yeah, I mean, you try guys a have a lot of oh. flavors, you know, you know, so um, Nillionaire Mango, um, mm -hmm. there was a Nillionaire, I thought it was just a straight Nillionaire. Yeah, tell so, me a little bit about that story. So what happened was, you know, I guess I'll just go from the beginning, you know. So we start, we opened our company in a basement on May 1st of 2014, my partner's basement. We made one batch of e-liquid, bottled it, built a website, and launched it. Okay. Um, pretty much failed miserably for about six to seven months, couldn't sell one, you know, bottles. And then all of a sudden we started getting a little bit of wholesale and things started to turn around for us. And I decided at that point that we needed to take care of our customer base, right? Because it's all about customer experience with Independent Vapor. That is how we built our company. Okay. So, um, you know, there were there were 50-50 blends on the shelf and there were only five flavors. So I'm like, well, we need more SKUs, but you know, what's the direction of the industry going? And, um, you know, that's when I, I said, I'm gonna make a Max VG line with 10 flavors, you wow. know? And Millionaire was one of those 10 flavors. But it, it created such a fervor in the industry around here that yeah. like it had to become its own thing. So once we expanded our wholesale operation further beyond the basement, got into a new building that could handle it, you know, had the infrastructure built, um, I decided to launch a five flavor line that is all millionaire. So you can actually so still was, buy it in the old label. Really? But it's the OG also labels, it's yeah. All, yeah, it's also available in original in the uh, the Millionaire series line. Okay. Yeah. So the original Millionaire was uh, a raspberry flavor, right? Rainbow Sherbet. Rainbow Sherbet. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a rainbow sherbet. And the reason I made that specific flavor is because I couldn't get Jimmy the Juice Man Sherb. Oh. And I really wanted it. And it doesn't taste anything like his, but um, but it's kind of its own thing, but it's sure. along those same lines. And it was my, it's been my all day vape forever, you know? Okay. It's like the one I reach for if I want a fruit vape. So. And then you made the uh the millionaire series so the mango uh there's five flavors right yep so the mango what was it again mango raspberry original uh menthol and grapefruit okay yeah sweet yeah awesome and those are getting a lot of national attention right now with the new labels actually you know i, I came in today and i was like millionaire i thought that was just one flavor and then uh -huh. i saw all the colors and i'm like that's got to be a whole new line i, I, I yes. was confused but i was like kind of like this is, I know the Millionaire brand, but I thought it was just a, a flavor in a line. Yeah. Now it's its own line. Yeah, now it's so, its own thing, you genius. know? Genius. Yep. Yeah, good job. And actually it's uh, changed the whole path of, in direction of the way we brand our company to the public now. So uh, there's going to be tons of changes coming to our manufactured brands as far as the look and feel on the on the shelf and also the formulation of the product you know okay. we only have a couple of months to do that so yeah yeah it's, it's coming crunch time right mm -hmm. right um so when you started you started in a basement with your buddy mm -hmm. now is he is he a relationship like how does that i met him through a mutual friend i'd okay. say uh, 10 or 11 years ago and uh, he and i always kept touch somewhat because whenever i was buying a house or selling a house or something he was a real estate appraiser 
Okay. So I would call them up and say, hey, man, I'm looking at this house. Tell me if yeah. it's going to come in on, you know, at the right you know, quantity. And, uh, you know, we just got to talking and he's, you know, he's a very good guy and he knows how to run an office and he, and he started his own company. So he actually knew the, the framework that was needed where I had just been a grunt for all the whole bunch of different yeah. companies my whole life. I had sure. no idea, you know? Um, so yeah, we just, we got to talk and actually I was remodeling his house on the side when we concocted the crazy plan to start a company, Yeah, you know? So you said, Hey, I've been seeing a lot of traction boosted in town. Um, and I, these little cartomizers or whatever it was that you yeah. first, first thing you're like, they're selling like crazy. They're super expensive. We can probably get in. It was probably, uh, what'd you say? 2014? Yeah, that was uh, May 1st of 2014 is when okay. we launched our company. So it was, uh, you know, it was... And that's uh, like perfect timing, I feel like. Yeah, like the winter before that, we came up with it. Okay. And then um, what what'd you do besides before e-liquid? Well, I drove a coffee truck, uh, a wholesale coffee truck around to like gas stations mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit for about three years. And... Um, you know, all these different gas stations, they are the hub for people in that city, unfortunately. So it was a very busy job, but it was dangerous at the same time because I was collecting a lot of cash and things like that. Okay. But, um, you know, I was a sales rep. I just went from store to store, talked to the owners, and tried to get them to carry our products, you know. Wow. And uh, that's actually how we got independent off the ground is because when we opened May 1st of 2014, there were two, two vape shops in the state of Michigan. You know, so I had to load up a, my trunk with juice and go drive sure. around the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I still have four of those customers today. That's great. From going and doing that. So, um, you know, that's my background. You know, it's road sales. But I also always thought that I wanted to own a business. I knew it was challenging. I didn't realize it was this challenging. But I knew it would, was a challenging uh, thing to do with your life. But there's purpose behind that, you know, instead of just earning some union mandated pay that, you know, they say <laughs> yeah, this is what yeah. you get. Sure. You know, no yep. matter what you do, this is what you get. So... Um, I like the idea of giving myself a raise just by putting in a little more work. Yep. You know? Yep. Before 2014, you drove truck and you delivered uh, coffee. You were a sales rep. What did you do prior to that? Like, grades, after oh, grade school on? I was like mortgage salesman, uh, okay. commercial sign fabricator, installation service rep. Um, you know, I, I washed dishes. Stuff. I sold car washes. <laughs> I, you know, I did everything possible just to get by, you know. Um, we grew up uh, where I, I would say probably right in the middle class. Okay. You know, my father worked in automotive his whole life. And, uh, so you're native to this area, like Detroit area? Yes, I grew up right at 17 in Garfield, which is right over here in Clinton Township. Okay. Yeah, cool. but I was born in Detroit. Gotcha. Yeah, so. Cool. And have you left Detroit ever, like moved to Florida? Yeah, I moved to Arizona for two years uh, from the age of 20 to 21. Okay. Uh, that's how long it took me to run out of money. <laughs> and then I, you know, jumped in my car and drove sure. right back. Man, yeah. You know. And ran out of gas right when you pulled into yeah, Detroit. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, on fumes. <laughs> yes. Great, great, great. Um, so are you a sports guy? Are you into anything like that? Or is yeah, I mean, I like... played football growing up. So that was, uh, you know, that's always been a part of my life. It's not something that I'm like super passionate about anymore. Yeah. Like really, I love being an entrepreneur and that's what I fill my time with. Sure. Um, you know, when I travel, it becomes about business. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. Like my girl and I can go somewhere. We end up in vape shops always, sure. you know. Um, so I just grind and hustle all day, every day. I got two, two children from a previous relationship that, okay. uh, that are my heart and soul, you know, and I really want them to succeed in life. So I'm going to try to set them up the best I can. And, yeah. um, you know, so I guess, you know, I play golf, Okay. you know, that's my getaway sometimes, you know, um, but you know, social media is an obsession of mine for yeah. sure. Oh gosh. My. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get away it from really it. Really right? is. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's crazy because it's. Before, even a couple of years ago, social media wasn't really even a thing. I mean, it mm -hmm. was, but now you can't even have a tire shop and not have social media. You have to. Right. I mean, it just... And the business aspect of it is what really, uh, really drives me to it. But, sure. I, you know, it's a very enjoyable place, too, sometimes. Yeah. You know, they can go both ways. But, you know, I really do uh, enjoy spending time on there and just figuring out how it works. I'm just, like, obsessed with how do you get more people to look at your company. Yeah. You know? So it sounds like you're kind of uh, a nerd when it comes to like analytics and all that. Oh stuff. yeah, we look at what gets measured gets improved, man. Sure. So you know, if if you're not looking at every single aspect of your business, you're failing. Like there's certain things where I need to count them better. Sure. You know, uh, just from an overview, you know, I need to look at them more often and see what we could do better. But um, I think everything does lead back to measurement and then action and implementation.
Do you have any higher education? Yeah, I went to Wayne State for a year, okay. and then that's how I ended up in Arizona. I was really sick of you know professors and school and structure, so I decided to empty my bank account and drive yeah. to Phoenix. <laughs> You're like, you know? all my money, whatever. I'll just yeah. take a chance. Yeah, but you know, Wayne State. You know, I, I went there to play football actually, okay. um, but then you know, I I didn't even make it through like you know the first like ten practices. I just didn't want to do it. You're like, yeah. screw it. Yeah, so. Um, you know, I had played for 13 years. I played from the age of six all the way on. So, so you probably like, would burn out like, uh, Yeah, I was done. I was done tired of practicing, man. I wanted to go sow my wild oats yeah, and, yeah. you know, meet girls and yeah. have fun, man, you know, so. And you um, did. That's yeah, great. I did it, yeah. <laughs> um, so we, you know, we're, we're at this company, you're at uh, Independent Vapor, and now you got the ball rolling. I mean, people probably look at you and say, God, Ryan, he did it. It's super easy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what was the hardest thing? to get the ball rolling? Like, what What do you think was, like, the hard, I mean, you talked about, you know, distribution and, like, getting those customers, and you have four accounts that you've had since 2014, which is which is unheard of, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot of people get a company, they have it for six months, and they go on to the next one, or they go to the next one, or, you know, keeping that same company is, is really, is hard, so. Well, I think that the most difficult thing was finding determination and motivation. Um, willing to put myself in uncomfortable spots at times. Um, like this, right? You know, yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, I'm nervous in this sure. situation, but um, but you have to look past that and look, dig, dig deep. And these are all cliche, but they're, they're real and they're said for a reason. You got to dig deep, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those first six or eight months when we were failing, my partner and I were arguing all the time. I borrowed the money to buy all this stuff to make this juice for my little brother. You know, I had to swallow my pride there. Sure. Um, so I think the hardest part of it is just, you know, realizing that people are going to say no to you way more, 99% more than they say yes. But if you find the one relationship where they say yes and you do the right things once that happens, yeah. that's a lifelong thing. You know, so you're just trying to collect one of those at a time. And sometimes they're going to blow up. Sometimes social media is a big thing. So you're going to look bad on social media, sure. even when you might be right. Yeah. You know, so um, I think maintaining an image uh, but, but the hardest thing, I, I guess, has just been the time I've missed with my children. Sure. You know. And I, and I can appreciate that. I've yeah. got two kids. So. Oh, you do? Yeah. And it's like, you give up time, man. Yep. You go to a convention on the weekend, your kids are sitting there, you know. Yeah, where's dad? You know, yeah, yeah what's going on, yep. you know? And, yep. Um, you know, I don't want them to remember their childhood as being a fatherless one, but I'm doing this now so that they can remember their adult ages as having their father around a lot. Exactly. You know. Uh, when they need the advice. You know? So now you said that you borrowed the money from your brother. Yeah. Younger, older? Younger. Okay. Yeah, he was in the Navy for uh, I, I think like nine years. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, when you borrowed the money, that was what amount was that that you started this company with? with? Uh, independent was started with twenty thousand dollar investment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you had the money, mm -hmm. and what does twenty thousand dollars get to start a juice company? Uh, I mean, you can probably get in wholesale value about fifty thousand dollars in liquid, okay. um, a website, and some shipping supplies, yeah. and maybe like you know, maybe some marketing materials or things like that. But other than that, you have to have a nest egg for when that stuff sells out. You got to reorder, right? Yep. Leeway um, time. I mean, there's just so there's, there's so much to think about, ugh. especially doing it out of a house, right? So once it started to grow, when we were in the basement, is when like you know cash flow situations happen. <laughs> we have pallets dropping in the driveway, <laughs> like you know, you're like, like, mom, can you move the van? <laughs> right. I gotta get in there. <laughs> right, but um, you know, it was twenty grand. You yeah. know, and, I, and it's unfortunate today that that's not the cost of entry into our market anymore. If you want to make e-liquid and be successful selling it, I'm, pro I probably put a two hundred thousand dollar price tag on that. Yeah, wow. To do it right, you know. Um, not everybody opens a company in a basement and lands millionaire. I got lucky. You know, I hit that golden goose, man. So that, that is, is that the juice that kind of puts you on the map? Yes. Okay. Everything you see here was pretty much paid for with millionaire profits. Wow, yeah. that's got to feel good. Yeah, it does. So is that something, that the recipe, is that something that you came up with? Or was it kind of like... Yeah, I, I, des I developed all the recipes. I've always kind of, I've always liked cooking, but I, I never wanted to do it for a living or anything. Mm -hmm. But I've always liked flavor combinations and things like that and interested me and... Um, you know, the great thing about e-liquid is it's infinite. Yeah. It can be as many different things as you want it to be. And if you find one of those combinations that the, the general public mostly likes, <laughs> it's gonna, um, it's a, you it's hit a home it. Run. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I like that you can create just by stand, you can create wealth for yourself and your family and take care of people around you and do great things by looking at these six flavoring compounds and figuring out how much of each one it takes yeah. to, to make people buy from you. And there's you know? infinite amount of, of 
you know, possibilities with just those six flavors. It's incredible. You know, you know? I mean, the, you could this whole room could be filled up with just six flavors. Mm -hmm. You know, and right now there's, I mean, I'm looking around. There's juice from one side to the other, and it's yeah. just. It, it, it looks, well, we're e-liquid e fanatics. Like, yeah. I started mixing juice, but I didn't, like, mix for myself. I liked other guys' liquids, like the standard uh, from California, Lonnie yep. Bozeman. Um, his juice line changed my life. The minute I ordered it and vaped it, I was just like, this is what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah, you, you know? talk about Jimmy the Juice Man. Jimmy, yeah. And Boosted right over here. Yeah. I mean, uh, just... John Nathan is, a, is an inspiration to me, just the way that he mixes and the way he talks about it, you know. Um, so, you know, Dan Vela, Bob Pesh, like there's all these guys that are really, really talented in creation, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate the, the federal government has decided to chop our knees out on that, but you know, there's still foreign markets that you can create in. Um, now have you tapped into those markets at all? Uh, just a touch. Okay. You know, we've gotten into, we're, we're doing some work into China right now, Malaysia, and then, you know, Europe's an ongoing thing yeah. forever, you know, but, um, you know, my thing is I'm letting everyone else rush in so that I can see what mistakes are being made and kind of, you know, try to protect myself a little. So it sounds like everything you've done is is kind of like a premeditation. Like you've already thought about it. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to execute it. And it's it's a full foolproof plan. Foolproof. How do we say that? Foolproof. Full, foolproof plan. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I mean. Well, I don't know if it's foolproof, but it's been talked about a lot. And I, I would say this: that the only reason why our company is structured that way and why we think ahead that far, is uh, because my partner and I have a really good relationship. He lets me bounce ideas off him. You know, and sometimes yeah. I'm trying to convince him of it. Yeah. You know, and then other times I'm trying to just see what his reaction will be to see just what any person would think of it. But he's always the first person that I call when something a light bulb goes sure. off. You know. Um, but you know everything that you see independent doing today. You, you rest assured, Jarrett and I have been talking about it for a for year. For a while, yeah. You know? Yeah. And sometimes we talk about things for two years before it happens. But sometimes we talk about things for two weeks and then they happen. And then it's implemented. Yeah. Great. So um, I guess we just constantly come up with ideas. We're more of an incubator than anything independent vapor. You know, um, we we like new ideas, and, and and if you're not going where other people aren't in business, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. You know. So what's the, I mean, we talked about the hard hardships of it. What's the best decision that you've ever made at Independent Vapor? To leave uh, Wild Bill's tobacco. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because um, that was kind of like the ground running for you. I mean, they had... Yeah, that's how I built this building, you know. I'll admit that. Uh, but... You know, I named the company Independent Vapor Company, For you know, reason. and uh, that it wasn't to be controlled by anybody else in my backyard, and that's kind of what the feeling was. Um, you know, I didn't sign a contract with them. They wanted me not to sell to certain people. I didn't sign a contract with them. They wanted better pricing, you know, so it's like it was always a constant problem, you yeah. know, and uh, it was frustrating. And now those are still here. I mean, I'm probably more of a psychotic mess now than I was even back then because the money was a little bit easier, but... Um, but it speaks to the soul of the company, you yeah. know, like our employees love us to death. You know, we, we, we had to lose three of them when that happened, you know, everything came to a head and like three mm -hmm. people had to leave and it was a little messy, but you know, two of those three people worked for us again. Yeah. You know, I went, I went from doing a really nice number each month to like literally a third of that. And my payroll stayed the same as if I was doing that number. I've been there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just that struggle has made us a better company because it's forced me into more uncomfortable relationships and, and to open my arms to people again where there's a lot of complacency when you land a big account that soon. Well, you, you think it was only revenue, a year and a half into my that, company. That you've, that you've generated and you're like, oh, you see these numbers, but the output, you know, I mean, I'm sure it was, they were beating you up over price. Yeah, those things to, happen, right? You, you know? know, and it was like, it was too much asking for it. It was the problem. Sure. But, um, you know, the other thing I didn't like, the way I saw how they treated other vendors when I was in their building, the way they talk about them. And I'm like, when I leave here, are you saying this about me? Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, it's about partnering with people that you love and respect, even though if it, if it means you're doing this thing on principle. So a lot of businessmen that I've told that decision to have said that that's the dumbest thing you could have ever done. You yeah. should have kept that no matter what. But, you know, Bob Pesh and I are working in other industries now, and that protected his store. Who's you know, Bob Pesh? Bob Pesh makes Bake Up Bros. Uh, he's these guys here, chocolate okay. cream and key lime cheesecake. It's like yep. two very popular flavors for us. Um, you know, he's a great guy. He's a partner on another thing. And like I, that probably wouldn't have happened if I stayed in Wild Bills because it would have just forced my company into this model. Yeah. You know? 
Um, and plus, this is my backyard, man. You know, I grew up around here. Yeah. You know, this is just as much my city as theirs. And, exactly. You know, that's why we started the, uh, the premier location program, where it's essentially a licensing and distribution contract where they get to use our name and then they order their products from us. Oh, you wow. Know? Um, and they still own their shop. So the fact that it's called Independent Vapor and they still hold ownership of their store is like, it's just something that I know they take pride in because they tell me they do, mm -hmm. you know, and they show every day when they represent our brands to people. Great. You know? Okay. So how do you feel about FDA regulations? Love well, I think, you yeah. know, I think we're going to make it, Anthony. Yeah. Um, you know, the Trump, reg the Trump administration coming in, although I don't, don't agree with everything he does, um, I think that he's going to do a really nice job in, in protecting our industry to the best of his ability. Uh, there's a lot of senators and representatives that are, that are kind of coming around to the idea that these regulations are burdensome and they're going to put people out of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but also that you have to look at other industries to, that have experienced uh, this type of regulatory action. Uh, the smoke segment, okay? So they have, they've have they had to call a bong five different things. A bong, a water pipe, a, a tobacco yeah. pipe, a, a, a cigarette pipe, and now they're back to bongs, and that's okay. And, um, you know, their industry has evolved over, like, the past five decades, essentially, once, you know, you know once the hippies came around in the 60s, sure, yeah. it kind of just rolled into what it is now. And, um, you know, there's going to be people that pioneer an industry, and they're going to go through the hardships for the people down the line to do well. Uh, and then they're going to be considered, you know, legends, you know, and like that's what you get into something like this for. So if, if you put something tough in front of the right people, mm -hmm. you know, magical things can happen. And I do think that uh, the government is going to see this as an overreaching action and that it's going to get kicked down the road. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't agree with you anymore. Yeah. And, you know, you talked about the products and how it's evolved and switched. I just remembered, and, and we talked about how we can't stay on topic because we're kind of the same in that aspect, but yeah. I remember uh, Hexome life. Everyone had Hexomes, mm -hmm. and you had an independent variation of that, didn't you? Uh, I actually <laughs> ran into a guy through Discover Authentic Vape, which is a group on Facebook. Okay. Uh, he, he's local here. His name's Dana Herman, and he goes, hey, man, I got a buddy that can engrave these, like, red copper mods for you, man, you know, and... Uh, it kind of woke me up that like you know it might be a collector's item one day so why not order 10 or 15 of them and they sold out immediately two hundred dollars a piece i made just a few bucks on each it wasn't sure. much it was more of a marketing thing um and then those that went so well that i had a guy local to here make me some ham and boxes and yeah. like you know do his thing and uh you know he went out of business and didn't do the box mods anymore so the, the lifetime warranty went away like all of it sure. kind of fell apart so we stopped doing it you know but just last month, I did a poll in our group and asked them if they'd like IVC hexomes, and there was like you know seventy people. Sure. So we might do it. I don't. It's a very it's a big investment, you know. But it's something that we might do, you know, as now, a marketing. Now you strategy. talked about other businesses and and how they've evolved. Mm -hmm. E-liquid juice is that something that you're gonna do and then maybe catapult into something else? You talked about a coffee distribution company. Is yeah, I mean, I got else? I got ideas for businesses all day, every day now because I know how to build one, right? Yeah. So the minute that you know you the fail, pathway, you know, yeah. <laughs> then you know that you know I just got to keep trying this until something works. Um, we're actually launching a suspension fluid into the smoke segment, which okay. which will help people take their herbal concentrates. So you have raw herbal concentrate. Uh, you heat up the solution in the microwave. You drop it in, mix it up, and then pull it into a syringe, put it in, in a, into a atomizer, and you can vape it. Wow. So um, that's not that's like not a new technology, but like we think we're doing it a little better. We were we were in kind of an arms race with somebody else in the state of Michigan on this yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, but I like competition. That's yeah. healthy. That's the American way. Uh, right. And we actually both figured it out at the same time. And I know because I'm friends with them. So yeah. like we were talking, they didn't tell me the secret. We figured it out too. And mm -hmm. now you know it, there's there's kind of there's kind of an arms race to that, but. Um, I like products that, that, like you're selling the shovel, okay? Mm -hmm. So everyone going to rush for the gold, um, you know, they're not the ones that make the money. The guys that make the money are the ones selling you the shovel as you're running to go dig for gold. Yep. So I'm trying to be the guy in the middle, just handing things off to people and, uh, you know, connecting people. And then distribution networks is something that we really like. We love servicing customers, you know, whether it be a shop or a retail customer. We love servicing customers, no matter how big or small, we like to take care of people. So... As long as I have that philosophy for anything we launch, I think we're mm -hmm. going to do real well. But the branding and the marketing and the advertising is something that we've been missing for a long time, and we're really starting to shift the whole company sure. into doing that. And it you sounds know. like you've done that with a millionaire. Yeah. I mean, yep. You've taken, like you said, millionaire paid for this whole building. 
Yeah. So why not make it a line? Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a no-brainer in my eyes. Now, I have some other really large lines. What if I start cutting those up sure. and, and presenting them to people the right way? So, like, you just about trying new things until they until they work. Um, I, I might open ice cream shops. I'm thinking of that, man. You know, there's a specific well, if way. you do, to... um, I, I know a lot of formulas. <laughs> in fact, yeah. the, guy, the guy I just bought uh, um, a house from, yeah. he, he makes... Um, he comes up with the solutions for Hudsonville ice cream. You guys, do you guys make your own? No, we don't. Okay. But I know everything about it. Okay. And we, we talked about doing it. Uh huh. Um, so if you want to do that, you let me know, and I, the best spot is going to be in Florida, in Florida or Florida, anywhere. I'll tell you. I'll tell you <laughs> off the camera because it's okay. it's pretty cool story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a side note. Emery Thompson. So. Um, that's no plug to this. I don't know where I was going with that. <clears throat> so what do we expect next out of Independent Vapor? I okay. feel like I feel like you're an idea guy and you just like I bet your notebook is like seven hundred pages and you just like rip page thirteen off and says that's what we're, we're doing, doing this one now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kinda like that. Uh, herbal suspension is that product I was just telling you about. That's uh that's going to be launching in about two weeks here. Okay. Uh, you know, it's gonna have a full uh, wholesale and retail network available to people. Um, then also, uh, a lot of our manufactured brands are going to be getting rebranded, reformulated, and relaunched. Uh, we have until September 1st to do that. So you're going to be seeing, like, I guess new flavors, but it's just uh, some old flavors that need some updating. Sure. You know, and uh, I want simpler. them to be more, more closer to the mass appeal. Okay. Right? Um, so we're trying to systemize our manufacturing and shrink that. So uh, people are going to see that some of the stuff that they loved over the past two years is probably going to go away and get reintroduced in a new way. But I hope that that helps them find, uh, you know, something next, you know, that they that they love even more. So um, we're going to be changing all of that. And then on top of that, um, you know, there's always more independent stores in, in the works that people are talking about. And I'm always trying to work that deal to flip a shop to carry more of our product. Um, so you're going to see more of that probably outside the state of Michigan, by sure. the way. So we're working on some things on the East Coast. Um, so right now there's only one independent vapor? There, this is the one that we own outright in, okay. in this building headquarters. Okay. Everyone else is kind of like a franchise model. Okay. You know? So how many independent vapors are there? There's 15. Okay. Yeah. Good. And um, there's four in Ohio, one in Wisconsin, and uh, nine here. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I get to call them mine, but they're not. You know, <laughs> well, they own the they own the lease, but you know, we help them uh, with their business model and yeah. And well, it sounds like stock. you have a formula that works. Yeah, it works. And, you know, hey, this is what we should stock. This is a proven model. Right. Let's well, you, do it. Yeah, you know, there's like there's guys like Troy Ryder at Rig City. I, you guys have probably heard of him mm -hmm. on social media. He's very good on there. Um, you know, he had a limited selection of e-liquid, and he wanted to expand it, and this was the perfect opportunity for him to do that, essentially risk-free. Sure. Um, so, you know, there are terms associated with that, a credit application, but it's something where, you know, we want it on the shelf. It doesn't do anything when it's sitting right here. Exactly. It's got to be in front of people buying it, you yeah. know, so... You know, independent's going to be moving forward into some other directions that people probably aren't used to. But, um, you know, I'm happy to introduce new things to the market and just see where, where things go from there. I like it. Know. I like it. So I want to say thanks again to Ryan for having us out here. I really appreciate it. And it was pretty cool to see your operation. I mean, I knew you were big, but it's pretty big back there. Like thanks, a lot man. bigger than I even thought, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so cool. um, the location's great. And you said there's like a hundred and some thousand cars that pass every day. So. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. So don't forget to like our uh, video, share it with all your friends, and uh, please comment down below what shop you want us to see next. And don't forget to subscribe because we got some awesome videos coming and uh, we're gonna pick one of those winners who do all three for the Nillian Airline. And it is right, boom, right there. So it looks Front awesome. And, and uh, I'll let Ryan. I just want to say thanks to the Mitten Vapors guys for coming out. I've known you for a couple of years now, and it's just good to have you guys out and just see the operation. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just meet like-minded people, you know. So thanks for that. This guy back here, you're a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I just want to say thank you to friends, family, customers, everybody that helped us get our start in this. And, um, you know, we do this for you guys. So uh, let's just keep it going. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Is that and thanks again, Ryan. I appreciate thanks, it, man. Absolutely. Really do. Thanks for coming out, guys. You were great, dude. Thanks, man. Perfect.